Good morning, friends. Welcome back to my kitchen. Today, we are gonna be cooking a ton of freezer meals. I'm gonna be doing anywhere between 18 and 20. I'm just not sure. Some things I might get two or three, so that's why I'm not sure the exact number of how many we're gonna be getting today. But I have a ton of stuff prepped. It's Friday morning, it's 9.17. Today, mostly, I'm just gonna be assembling. I do need to cook a few things. For the most part, I just have to assemble, except I need to cook two things, the stroganoff and the chicken pot pie, but I've already cooked the meat for it. Let me go over what freezer meals we are gonna be doing. I'm gonna be doing uh, teriyaki chicken thighs. Um, we're gonna do three meatloafs. I'm gonna do an, an Italian-style stuffed pepper, and then I'm gonna do like an enchilada Mexican-style stuffed pepper. We are gonna do four lasagnas. We are gonna do stroganoff and chicken pot pie. So a bunch of this stuff I prepped yesterday to make my life a lot easier today. I will bring you back and I'll show you what I prepped yesterday. It is the morning before I'm gonna do a big freezer cooking day. So in here I have three cups of just plain white rice. This is gonna go in an Italian style stuffed pepper. And I like to just get this going because I can have this passively cooking today before tomorrow I need to assemble all the meals. To, in here, we are going to do a Mexican style rice. Just to have the rice in here, this is three cups of white rice. And then I have a salsa verde here. So I just get those in here of salsa. Putting a few tablespoons of homemade taco seasoning in here. And then two cups of water because those salsas weren't very liquidy. So yesterday I thawed all the meat. I shredded and ground all the cheese. I did three different styles of cheese. I did a Monterey Jack, a cheddar, mozzarella, and Parmesan. I shredded way more than I needed, but I already had my food processor out, so I figured I would get all the cheese shredded. I don't like to buy the pre-shredded cheese because I don't like that coating, the cellulose that they put on pre-shredded cheese. So I figured since I have my food processor out and I'm already making a mess, shred all the cheese. So whatever cheese we don't use today, I'll throw in freezer bags and freeze. I, ha I ground the breadcrumbs for the meatloaf. This is homemade bread that I had made previously and it had gone stale before we could eat it, so I just threw it in the freezer. And since I had my food processor out, go ahead and get those breadcrumbs ground up. My Instapot had the Mexican rice in it, so I got the Mexican rice out and I just gave the Instapot a nice little rinse. Eight chicken breasts in here. This is gonna be for the chicken pot pie and for the Mexican stuffed peppers. So I'm just gonna season these lightly that will go into both. I already put about five cups of water in there because I need a little extra chicken broth for making the chicken pot pie. I just put some salt in and now I'm gonna put a little bit of garlic and then I'll put onion powder. I think I'm gonna do 50 minutes. When this is done, I'm gonna get the beef in here for the stroganoff. So I'm gonna go about my day, do, do other things that have nothing to do with cooking. The chicken is all done. I've been doing things around the house and it's been actually done for 53 minutes now. And that looks perfect. It smells really good in here. And that's what I wanted to see. You can see that the chicken broth is right up to the line and I'm gonna use that chicken broth for making the chicken pot pie. I was gonna use the KitchenAid to shred it, but as I pick it up, this chicken's just falling apart, so I probably won't need to even use the KitchenAid. So what I'm gonna do now is use this Instapot to cook my roast to make my um, beef stroganoff. This is how I save myself time and energy when I make these, when I do these big batch cooking. Um, I am now gonna use this Instapot for the third time without having to really wash it because I just keep using it one after the other. I am going to put in some red wine. I'm gonna use this broth to make my stroganoff as well. So that's some red wine. There was, I don't know, this much chicken broth in the bottom of the pot. I probably put a cup of red wine in there. And then this is some Worcestershire. I'm gonna to need to get more of that because I love Worcestershire in my stroganoff and beef. I'm gonna put a little bit of just ground mustard. Not too much of that because I don't want the stroganoff to taste too mustardy. Salt. I would normally cut up an onion probably to put in here. That was um, a bunch of onion powder and a bunch of garlic powder. But I'm not gonna cut up an onion because I don't want to mess around with that right now. I will put a bunch of onions in the actual stroganoff. So for now, just the onion powder and garlic powder is gonna be just fine. Just 
Splash more Worcestershire. Yes, I buy my Worcestershire in one gallon containers. And I'm gonna add one, or no, this is two cups of water. So I really don't like to buy those boxes of chicken stock or chicken broth if I can help it because I find like they're very expensive. And if I can do things like this where I'm, when I'm cooking big batches and I'm cooking already eight chicken breasts at a time and I can just throw in, you know, five or six cups of water, I can get for free two quarts of chicken broth. And this is organic chicken broth because those chicken breasts were organic. So I probably would have paid like $3 for each one of these because those containers are a quart and each one of these jars is a quart. So I basically just saved myself $6. And this is the same thing I'm gonna do with the beef stock for the stroganoff. This is grass-fed beef from a local rancher that I buy in bulk. I buy half a cow at a time. I do have a video up there if you wanna see that. But by adding extra liquid into this, I'm gonna get a beautiful beef stock. And now that the rice has cooled, I'm gonna get this in the fridge. I'm gonna let this stock cool on the counter before I stick it in the fridge. And I have my Insta Pot set for 90 minutes for this beef roast. So I'm just gonna go about my day. I'm gonna continue doing random different chores around the house that I'm doing. And then we'll come back to this when it is done. This is done. I've been outside actually working in the garden. And so it's actually been done for an hour and a half. So let's open it up and see what it looks like. It smells good. Oh yeah, this is done. It's fall apart tender. Yeah, did you see that? That's perfect. And just like that, we have half a gallon of beautiful beef stock. So I rinsed out the Instapot from the roast. I have my Instapot on saute mode and I am gonna go ahead and cook up two pounds of Italian sausage and two pounds of ground beef. And what I'll do is once the meat is sauteed, I'll add a few onions, and then I'm gonna divide this meat mixture 50-50. 50% of it will go into the red sauce to make the sauce for the lasagna, and the other 50% is gonna go into the stuffed Italian peppers. So I think I said two pounds, but these are actually one and a half pound packages, so this will be a total of three pounds of ground beef. I normally would do this on the stove, but like I said earlier, I want to do as least amount of dishes as possible, and I already have the Instapot dirty, so that's why I am using the Instapot. Go ahead and add quite a bit of garlic, maybe three tablespoons, maybe a tablespoon and a half of fennel. I'm adding fennel because I only had the, only had the two pounds of ground sausage, and so the fennel will give that ground beef a nice, yummy sausage flavor. Maybe three good tablespoons of onion powder, some homegrown oregano. I would add uh, basil too, but I don't have any. I used that quite a long time ago. So homegrown oregano it is, and I'll add quite a bit of that. And maybe a half a tablespoon of crushed red pepper flakes. I almost forgot salt. While the meat's cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and save the good bits of beef for the stroganoff. I'm gonna save all the fat and grisly bits for the chickens, they will absolutely love that. Traditional stroganoff is made with braised beef. And so what I started doing, instead of using ground beef, is I would typically, when I make stroganoff, if I'm not doing it for, oops, for a freezer meal, what I'll do is on the first day, I'll take a roast and I will make a roast for dinner. My husband and I obviously can't eat an entire roast by ourselves, so what I'll do is I'll take the leftovers and then I'll make the leftover roast, because that's what this is, this is a chuck roast, and I'll make this into stroganoff. And it makes the best stroganoff. Because I'm doing freezer meals, I'm skipping the roast part and we're just gonna have stroganoff, which we like better actually than pot roast. Stroganoff is probably my husband and I's favorite dinner. I think that's cooked enough. I'm gonna go ahead and add the onions. So when I was getting the meat out of the freezer, I found two last bags of shredded zucchini from the last year's garden. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in this meat mixture. I just microwaved it just enough so that it would be soft and then I squeezed out the moisture. There was a lot of moisture that I don't wanna go into this meat mixture. I'm doing this for two reasons. I wanna add a little bit more veg to our dinner and this is a great way to do that. And two, it's just a great way to bulk up your meat and stretch those dollars a little bit. So I am gonna go ahead and call this mixture good. I grabbed my rice out. This is my rice cooker bowl. I'm gonna mix the Italian style stuffed pepper inside just in this bowl so that I don't dirty another dish. I'm gonna put probably four or five scoops in here. Let's start with four and see what that looks like. 
I'm not going to assemble these stuffed peppers tonight. I just wanted to get this meat cooked so that I can assemble them tomorrow. And then I needed to get the the red sauce meat mixture cooked so that it can cook overnight in the Instant Pot so that that will be ready in the morning for the lasagna. And that right there looks perfect. I'm going to let this cool a little bit and then I'll throw this back in the fridge. So what that's done is that's given me room to go ahead and add the tomatoes. I normally don't store my tomato products in Ziploc bags or, or half gallon mason jars. But the last time I did my, oops, my canning project, this was all the tomato product I had left and I didn't want to have to run my canners one more time. So I just went ahead and froze them. And I'm trying to clear out my freezer space, one, to put these freezer meals back into it, but the garden season is coming up. I want to make room in my freezer for the new garden produce. So trying to use up the stuff from last year and make room for this year. So I have one more jar of tomato sauce I need to get in here, but I am running out of space in here. And these tomatoes are a little bit on the waterier side. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just have this on slow cooker mode and just let it cook and cook and cook. And then before I go to bed, hopefully it will be down enough that I can add this jar. And overnight, I'm just gonna let this slow cook all night so that in the morning, this red sauce is gonna be ready for us to make the lasagna and to make the Italian stuffed pepper. Before I call it, I'm gonna add a few more ingredients. These are some homegrown leeks, dehydrated. I'm gonna go ahead and add some more onion powder and some more garlic. And just a little bit more oregano. Most of this stuff was super hands off and I was able to get a bunch of other stuff done while this stuff was cooking. It's just setting me up for success for tomorrow because I'm gonna have all this stuff ready to go. So I will see you bright and early tomorrow morning. So doing all that, it saved me a ton of time. So this morning we can just dive right in and get right into it. So a few things I like to do before I start my freezer cooking is I like to make sure my kitchen is kind of ready to go. So last night before I went to bed, I got my dishwasher um, ran. So this morning I was able to unload it. So we have a empty dishwasher. So as I cook, I can just put my dirty dishes into the dishwasher. I like to have a garbage can that is empty so that I can toss my garbage right into the garbage can as I go. I don't, I keep my garbage can in that cupboard and I don't wanna keep opening and closing that cupboard to throw things away. I wanna make this as easy as possible for me. And then I have right here, I have a compost bin. So the food scraps will be able to go to the chickens or the compost, wherever it needs to go. I just keep a nice big bowl ready, right where I'm gonna be chopping so that I can just put my scraps right in there. I went ahead also and took everything out basically that I'm going to need. I think I still need to get flour out and that's about it to make the cream of chicken and the cream of mushroom for the stroganoff and chicken pot pie. But I like to just get everything out because I'm going to be using some of these things for multiple recipes like my spices. So instead of getting them out of the cupboard and into the cupboard multiple times, I'm just going to leave them out on my counter and I'll use them as I go. First recipe here is meatloaf. So I have four and a half pounds of meat here, so this should definitely get me at least three meatloafs. So if you are new around here, my name is Becky, and it's just my husband and I. So you might wonder as I cook, why do I cook meals that are for a family size? You know, for four or six people. And that's because my husband and I both work full time. I have a big garden and I have a lot of hobbies that I like to do. Let me go get my hands washed. So we like to eat really good home cooked meals, but I don't have time to do that every night of the week. So what I can do is I can cook the amount for a family and we can eat it as leftovers. My husband's really great about eating leftovers. So if I cook one big meal, we can eat it for lunches and for dinners. So that was probably two good tablespoons of onion powder. I'm gonna put three tablespoons of garlic and I'm gonna go ahead and put one more um, tablespoon of onion powder, some salt. I typically don't follow recipes, but what I'll do for you guys is I will link recipes that are like what I'm cooking in the description below. So if you guys want recipes for what I'm doing, you can use those as guidelines. So this is some homemade ketchup. So I probably put one cup in there, maybe a cup and a half of Parmesan cheese. That was probably two cups of breadcrumbs. I'm gonna put five eggs in here, and then I'm gonna put a lot of pepper. A fourth a cup of mustard. This is stone ground mustard, but you could use regular mustard. Let's see, that's probably a half a cup to two thirds cup of Worcestershire sauce. I'm gonna 
gonna start with two onions because my bowl is getting pretty full. Now my hands are clean, so I am gonna go ahead and mix this with my hands. So we got our meat mixture all mixed up. I did go ahead and add the rest of that pint of ketchup. So there is one full pint of ketchup in here. And I am gonna freeze these first on this cookie sheet. I like to form my meatloaf into loaves like this and then cook them like this so that I can get the outside nice and caramelized versus cooking them in an actual loaf pan because then only the top gets caramelized. I'm gonna freeze them raw on this cookie sheet like this. And then when they're frozen, I'll individually wrap each one of these meatloafs. When I thaw them before I actually cook them in the oven, some brown sugar and some more ketchup on the top so that it creates a nice caramelized crispy top. But I won't do that until I get ready to actually cook them. So I typically only actually cook maybe two or three meals a week and then we eat leftovers, we take those to lunch or we eat them for leftovers for dinner. And then maybe a night or two, I'll just make something simple that doesn't have leftovers, like we'll have salad for dinner. And there are three meatloafs going in the freezer. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on the lasagna here. Three nine by 13 foil pans out. And I have one, you can see right there, a casserole dish. That I will make for dinner tonight, I think, because that will be easy just to throw in the oven for dinner. That's one nice thing about when you do freezer meals, you can, you're making dinner at the same time. I make two different styles of lasagna. This is kind of my easy cheater lasagna. Uh, but if you've ever had lasagna bolognese with homemade bechamel sauce instead of ricotta cheese, oh my gosh, it is so good. But that's kind of my fancier lasagna if it's gonna be for a birthday or more a special occasion. I don't usually make that as a freezer meal because it takes way more time. So I have two things of ricotta. I have two 32 ounce, wow, that's a lot. I probably didn't need that much for this recipe, but that's okay. This is some onion top pesto that I made. All that is, is you can make pesto with any herb. Traditional pesto is made with basil, nuts, and Parmesan cheese, but I didn't get enough uh, basil in the garden last year to make that but I took the green onion part from my onions and I made an onion pesto. And I'm gonna go ahead and put half a jar of that in here be because I don't have any dried basil right now. So that'll just give this a little bit of a kind of herbaceous green flavor. I'm gonna add three eggs to this and then some salt and some black pepper. So this definitely is gonna be a little bit green, but that's okay. It's gonna taste really good. It smells really good. All right, it is gonna be really easy to assemble these lasagnas because I already have my meat red sauce cooked and I'm cheating and I'm doing the no boil noodles. This just makes life that much easier. Now we have two meals completed. We have the meatloaf and the lasagna. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the two items that need to be cooked so that while these are cooking, I can assemble the other two items. So I am vegetable prepping for both the stroganoff and the chicken pot pie now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all the onions chopped for both dinners. And then I will get the, on then I'll get the carrots chopped for the chicken pot pie. The celery, I don't need to chop for the chicken pot pie because I already have that chopped in the freezer from the garden this year. A lot of times what I like to do is keep the onion peels for making chicken stock. What I usually do when I have onions is I'll take the peels and throw them in a freezer bag and I'll use those when I make the stock. It does two things. It adds onion flavor and it's a zero waste option because normally these would just be thrown away or composted but it also adds a really beautiful color to your stock. It makes your chicken broth a nice, rich brown color. But right now I have a ton of onions. I have a ton of onion peels already in the freezer, so I'm just gonna compost these. 
And then a lot of times what I'll do is when I peel my carrots, I'll put the carrot peels in the freezer too. And I'll use those when I make my stock. But I have a lot of those in the freezer right now too. So the carrot peels are just going to go to the chickens. And they'll really enjoy that. So right now I'm going to go ahead and get the stove turned on. And I'm going to go ahead and throw a stick of butter in each one of these so that this is melting while I finish chopping up those vegetables. That's not what I want. That's better. Now, I don't think I mentioned yet, but my chicken pot pie, I'm not actually making it into a pie. I like to make chicken pot pie with biscuits on the top. So we, my husband and I call it chicken pot pie, even though it's chicken pot pie filling on the bottom with biscuits on the top. So I just make the pie filling. And then when I go to cook it, I get, what am I doing? I should just do this right into here. There we go. So when I go to cook it, I just take the chicken pot pie, even if it's frozen, and I throw it in the oven. And I might stir it a few times as it's thawing in the oven. And then once it's good and boily, then I make biscuit dough and I put the biscuits directly on the pot pie filling when it's boiling in the oven. So the bottom gets really soft, like almost like a dumpling. And then the top gets nice and browned and crispy. Not crispy, but it gets nice and, you know, toasty like a biscuit. It's so funny, a few of these classic meals that I'm making, like chicken pot pie, meatloaf. We didn't eat them. Let me rinse these off. We didn't eat them growing up because I grew up in the 90s. I'm 30, so I was born in 1990 because I grew up in the fat-free era. And so a lot of these recipes we didn't eat. And the teriyaki chicken I'm going to make with chicken thighs. And we only ate, my mom used to like to call it boneless, skinless, tasteless chicken breasts. That was our go-to we didn't eat ground beef. We didn't eat beef really. Steaks were too expensive and ground beef was too fatty. So a lot of these things I didn't grow up with, but they are some of my favorite meals now. Now I have this weird thing with carrots. I growing up did not like cooked carrots at all, at all at all. And now I really like them, but I'm really weird about it. If they're cooked, if they're cut in rounds like this, I don't like them. But if I cut them in cubes like this, I have no, I actually really like them. It's so funny, I have no idea why. I don't even like them in half, half moons. I'm the same with celery. I don't like celery in the C shape. I like it, well that's probably dangerous. I like it cut down the center and then cut into cubes. It tastes the same, but for some reason, I don't know if it's a textural thing or what, but. So I have celery here. And then I also have a bag of some homegrown leeks to cook down a bit before we make the cream of chicken soup. I'm gonna make that from scratch, just right in here. And I'll show you guys how to do that. But now, let's go ahead and get some of the other meals prepared while those cook. So what I think I'm gonna do now are the peppers. I'm gonna go ahead and prep all of these for the two styles. We're doing the Mexican style stuffed pepper and the Italian style stuffed pepper. All right, let's give these a stir and check on them. Whoa, okay. That is getting too brown, so I'm gonna take those off the heat. Well, I almost just burned these onions. That is one thing about uh, multitasking is you do put the risk of burning things. I don't want these onions browned. I want them caramelized. So I'm gonna actually taste that fond on the bottom of the pot and just make sure that it's not burnt flavor because I really don't want burnt flavor. I want caramelized flavor. No, we're good. So I'm just gonna let that sit there for just a minute while that deglazes. That was a close one. That would've been really sad because these are all the onions I have. Okay, so I'm gonna let that sit for just a minute and then I'm gonna get these peppers rinsed. I've got all my ingredients prepped to do the Italian stuffed peppers, but I can tell that my chicken pot pie is about ready for the next step, so I don't wanna start that and get distracted and burn this. So let's go ahead and 
get the cream of chicken base in here. I will be adding peas to this. I don't wanna add the peas now because I don't want them to cook any more than they need to. When I eventually put this in the oven, they're gonna cook. So we got our butter in there and I'm gonna start with one cup of flour and I'm gonna let this cook quite a bit to cook that raw flour out. So right now I am making cream of chicken soup. When I first learned that this is all cream of chicken is, is, is a fat agent, a thickening agent, and a stock, my mind was blown. So when we make our stroganoff, we're gonna make a cream of mushroom as well. So instead of using that stuff in the can, I always thought when I was younger, like what is that yellowy, gloppy cream of chicken stuff? How do you make that? And that's all it is. So I probably had that way too high while I was talking to you guys. So I'm gonna turn that down. This is that chicken broth that we made yesterday with the chicken. And I'm gonna put four cups in there. We're gonna start with that and see how that's looking. Oh, that smells really good. So I can already tell that this is gonna be a little bit thicker than I want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit more of this chicken broth here. And then I'm gonna add maybe two teaspoons of garlic powder. Just realized I wasn't filming. So what I did is I took a package of frozen peas and I laid the frozen peas on the bottom of this pan. You might be able to see in the corner that there are some frozen peas down there. And then I took this pre-cooked chicken that we cooked in the Instapot yesterday and I just laid a layer of chicken on here. And then I took the mixture, spread the mixture on top. I'm gonna let these cool completely and then we will cover them and put them in the freezer. Like I said, we don't put the biscuits on here until we actually cook them for dinner. These onions are looking nice and caramelized now, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw the mushrooms in. These are just pre-sliced mushrooms. So I have this beef stock that I made with the roast from the Instapot yesterday. And there is this layer of fat on here, and beef fat is called tallow, and that's really good flavor. So instead of putting more butter, which I probably will still end up having to do to make the roux, beef that I buy is 100% grass-fed, grass-finished. And I don't wanna waste this. This is, this is really beautiful fat. So I'm gonna put that in there. While those mushrooms are cooking down to our Italian-style stuffed peppers. back to the stroganoff. The stroganoff is almost ready here. I'm gonna call these mushrooms good. So I'm gonna add here one cup again of flour. If I had fresh garlic right now, I would have added garlic when I added the mushrooms, but I don't have any fresh garlic right now. I have one of my raised beds is 16 by four feet and the entire bed is garlic. So I'm really hoping that this year I get a really good garlic harvest. All right, so this has been cooking for probably four or five minutes and it's very, very, very thick. So now I'm going to go ahead and add some red wine. That is probably half that bottle. So it's probably two cups there. And I'm going to let this red wine cook to kind of get some of that alcohol flavor out. That's been cooking for a while. So let's go ahead and add our beef broth. I'm going to add probably all of this I have some leftover chicken stock from the chicken pot pie, so I'm gonna go ahead and just put this in there too. I have some Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire sauce, however you say that. I'm gonna go ahead and put maybe a quarter cup in here. So while this stroganoff is thickening up and the flour, the roux mixture is dissolving, and let's go ahead and move on to the Mexican stuffed peppers. So I just rinsed this bowl out. I didn't completely wash it but I rinsed it. This had the tomato sauce in it. I have a can of enchilada sauce and I had a tub of this in there. So I'm gonna doctor it up and make it taste a little bit better. So it doesn't taste so tin canny. So I'm gonna add one quart of tomato sauce and I'm gonna add some chipotles in adobo. Have you guys ever had this stuff? It is so good. It's a little bit spicy sometimes. Now they're full jalapeno. So I'm just using these scissors to kind of chop it up a little bit. I'm gonna put half that in there. 
I'm actually gonna taste, it's not too spicy. Yeah, I'll put three fourths that jar in there. Taco seasoning here, we'll put in here. That was probably third of a cup or so. So I just packaged up those leftover chicken breasts that I cooked. This is probably like three or four chicken breasts in a Ziploc bag. I think I'm gonna make chicken salad for dinner this week. So I'm actually gonna put that in the fridge as opposed to putting it in the freezer. So that's just another little bonus that I'll be able to save these freezer meals for another time. So the stroganoff is looking really good. What I'm gonna do, turn the stove off because it looks perfect now, I tasted it. I'm gonna go ahead and put the beef in. This is that beef that we cooked last night and I'm gonna let this cool completely. I'm gonna put this in some freezer bags and I just will know that I need to put sour cream in it when I serve it. I think I'm actually gonna get three meals out of this because it still needs that sour cream and that will bulk it up when I go to cook it. So I don't want that beef to get too crumbly. So I'm gonna take this off the heat and just let that cool before we package it up. So now let's get to our very last thing and that is the teriyaki chicken. I have my chicken thighs here. This is one of those Costco six packs. I'm gonna put two packs per Ziploc bag. So let's go over to our marinating station over here. I've got all my ingredients prepped and ready to go. So I'm gonna put a half a cup of brown sugar, not packed, in each one of these. This is Korean red chilies. So I'm actually gonna put two teaspoons of that because it's not spicy. I mean, it is a little bit, but it's got a really sweet chili flavor and then one teaspoon of red pepper flakes. A good tablespoon of ginger powder in each one of these. A heaping tablespoon of onion powder. A heaping tablespoon of garlic powder. Sesame oil. I'm gonna use the rest of this bottle because I don't have very much left. This is toasted sesame oil. And I am gonna measure the soy sauce just so I know how much I'm putting in there. I'm gonna put one cup in each one of these. Do a quarter cup of olive oil. That's probably more like a third of a cup that I'm putting in each one of these. So I was kind of wondered why people would take the time to make freezer meals where they are just putting, excuse you, marinated chicken in a bag. And what I've realized is that I don't make marinated chicken that often. I never think to thaw the meat in time to then have the time to marinate it. And so I don't do it. So I went out of town this last weekend with my sister-in-law we went on a little girl's trip and we made a teriyaki chicken and it was so good and it dawned on me this is why people marinate chicken and freeze it in a bag even though it's not hard to do this it doesn't take very much time but you have to think ahead if most of your chicken is in your freezer to get it out of the freezer to thaw and then have the time to marinate it so that is why I am doing this and I'm probably going to be doing this more and more as the summer comes because we do not have AC in my house, and so it gets really hot, and I don't like to cook inside very much in the summer. So I wanna have some different marinated chickens that I can throw on our Traeger. So I'm gonna put these on this cookie sheet and put in the freezer like this, because I want them to freeze flat, because they'll thaw faster if they're in a single layer. In the freezer they go. So I am just putting on here stroganoff, the date, and then that it needs sour cream so I don't forget. It is 1234, the kitchen is all picked up. I have the dishwasher running, the dishes washed. The only thing that I still have to do is let the stroganoff cool and then package it up and then throw it in the freezer. And I still have to wrap all of them. I feel like that was a very productive morning. Now I did buy myself yesterday some planter boxes. I'm gonna go build an herb garden. 
So I just got home from dinner. We went to a birthday dinner for my husband. And I figured since all of this stuff is pretty much frozen, I'm gonna go ahead and package it up. So let me show you how I like to package my freezer meals so that they're ready to go to eat. Just to recap what we made today, I have three teriyaki chickens, chicken and a biscuit, because they're not chicken pot pie, but we call them chicken pot pie. Two Italian style stuffed peppers, three lasagnas, plus the lasagna that's in the refrigerator. I think I said I was gonna make that for dinner tonight, but we went out for my husband's birthday, so that'll probably be dinner tomorrow. We have two Italian stuffed peppers, three stroganoffs, and three meatloafs. So how I like to package my freezer meals is I typically will do one layer of foil because when I cook my freezer meals, I will cook them with foil over them. Then I'll do one wrap of Saran Wrap one way and then one wrap of Saran Wrap the other way. I try not to use Saran Wrap as much as possible. I actually purchased this Saran Wrap the year my husband and I got married, which was in 2015. I think I said in that Q&A video we got married in 2014. We didn't. I graduated college in 2014. I hope I have enough Saran Wrap in here because this looks like it's... Oh my gosh, you guys and you just witness it. I just used the last of it. <laughs> and that's all the saran wrap I have. So it's been six years since I've had to buy saran wrap. I guess these are just gonna get wrapped in foil twice. And this is all the foil I have. I just opened this box, so hopefully it's enough to get us through. Shoot! Well friends, it's late, I'm tired, and I am gonna call it a night. I'm super glad to have all of these meals done and in my freezer. They're gonna make my life a lot easier in the coming weeks. This will probably last us, oh, this will last us a long time because we'll probably only use one or two maybe a week. If that, because I still will cook. Um, these are more for like convenience foods. If you guys have any questions for me, leave them down in the comments below or let me know how your guys' freezer cooking or if you like to do freezer cooking or bulk cooking or meal prep or anything like that. Give me, sorry, my dogs are fighting over here. Give me your guys' tips and tricks. I'd really appreciate that. If you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you wanna see more. And I can't wait to see you guys next time. Bye guys.